sure some of you out there remember the 69 Camaro. Eight years ago, it was in seven or eight of my videos, and I put it all back together. And the owner recently passed away, and now I'm going to take the four-speed out and put an automatic in it. And the guy that owned it before him had a big block in it and an automatic, and he raced it, I guess, only a few times, and it blew up. And then he took it apart and left it apart in his garage for like 20 years. Then when this guy bought it, he sold it to him with a small block and a M21 four-speed, which were not in the car at the time, and I put it all back together. I also rebuilt the four-speed that was in it. Uh, it had two bad gears in it. And check this out. The guy that owned it was real short, so he had the seat, the foam made real hard in it. And here's, I'm only 5'11", and here's how I have to get in it. Yeah. I look like I'm about six and a half feet tall here. Yeah, so the first thing I'm going to do is jack the car up. And I like to use these 12 ton o OTC uh, jack stands. The lowest setting is 18 inches, and the base is real big, so the car's real stable on there. And Harbor Freight makes some that look exactly the same. This is one of the worst things you can do on a car right here. Just putting a crossover pipe on the exhaust. And when this guy that owned it, he took it to the muffler shop, I told him not to do that. So then he comes back with the car and says, well, they talked me into doing that and said, well, they'll put it back out of the way so you can still pull a transmission. But normally on a car, you'd pull a one exhaust pipe loose to get the cross member out. When they're connected together like that, you can't do that. If this car had like regular exhaust manifolds on it and you pull both pipes loose, you can't even move the pipes down enough to get them off the studs on the exhaust manifold. You're stuck pulling the entire exhaust out of the car. But because this car has headers, I can just unbolt both pipes and it'll move down enough to get that out of there. Yeah, so next I'm going to take the shifter out and all there is is just some screws on around that hold the boot down and there's two bolts underneath and, and the handle comes off. Yeah, right now I'm just unbolting the exhaust. Look at these collector gaskets. Boy, they're in bad shape. Yeah, and as you can see, these pipes, they don't move much when they're not independent of each other, even with them both unbolted. And on a car that doesn't have that crossover pipe, they move around easy. You can move them right out of the way. Yeah, so the drive shaft and everything's out. The transmission's ready to come out now. And how I like to do it with these Hurst shifters is just pull the two bolts out and that hold it to the bracket and then it'll drop down enough and then you can pull it out and you never even have to take the shifter off. And it's kind of hard to see because the exhaust is right in the way. Yeah, I got it almost all the way apart. Just the clutch pedal's got to come out and then a different brake pedal goes in it. Yeah, the four speed has got uh, one ear broke off. Yeah, and this is a center force clutch. And how these work is the faster, the higher the RPM with these weights on it, it gives it more uh, pedal pressure. I've been using these clutches for almost 30 years now. I have one, also have one in my Chevelle. And they seem to work really good. Yeah, and I bought the kind of... Uh, brake pedal pad that takes this trim that goes on it that ha the pad hasn't showed up yet it, it, then it matches everything else it looks better if you do that too they make a standard pad that goes on there also but then this was the boot that where the clutch rod runs through there i'm gonna have to make something to patch that hole i'll just make a piece of sheet metal it'll screw over that and i'm also going to have to make a patch to cover up the hole uh where the shifter went through it it's just going to screw down to that so that i if it ever needed to be turned back to a Ford Speed car, it'd be very easy to do. Yeah, and here's this little cover I made. It's just out of a piece of 16 gauge metal. You won't see this anyway, so it'll be way up high under the dash. Yeah, 
Yeah, and here's that piece that I made that covers up where the quad shell rod goes through. Yeah, you can't even see that anyways. Yeah, and here's what it looks like with the automatic uh, brake pedal in it. Yeah, you see all these pedals with the trim on it? They look so much better than the stock one, standard ones. Yeah, so next I'm going to put the flex plate on it. And this is a 168 tooth uh, flex plate. And most of these parts came from Summit Racing. Some of the parts are for uh, actual Camaro came from a place called Eckler's. Yeah, and here's the transmission. It's a Turbo 350, and it's from TCI. It comes with a shift kit in it, and I got a 2500 style torque converter. Turbo 350s and 400s are very good transmissions. They hold up a very long time. I know I'm getting a lot of people asking me, why didn't you use a 700R4? 700R4 is not good for this application because uh, with the cam that's in it, you have I have to run a 2500 stall and the person who owns this is not going to be driving it or shifting it through the gears. They're going to put it in drive and drive it. And with a 700R4, most of the time it would be in overdrive and it wouldn't reach the stall speed and it end up burning up the transmission. And how you figure all this out is miles per hour times gear ratio times 336 divided by tire diameter equals the engine RPM when it's in direct drive. And normally I figure this at 65 miles an hour, I want to see it in the, in the power range on the cam. And with an overdrive transmission, the RPM is going to be a little lower than that. And if you're building a car and you got a stock engine... Yeah, and if you're building a car with a stock cam and, or stock engine and you want it to get real good gas mileage and you're going to drive it on the freeway a lot, then a 700R4 is a good transmission for that. And I'm just going to use this as an example. If you've got an engine and the power range and the cam is 3,000 to 6,500, you have to go with a 3,000 stall torque converter. If you don't, it'll kill the engine every single time you put it in gear because they don't have, it has no low end power. And you have to have low enough gears in it so it's always in that range. The RPM is always high enough. And like if I'm building a car with a manual transmission, when the transmission is in direct drive, I want to see the RPM in the power range. And like a three-speed and a four, a three-speed third gear would be direct drive. A four, four-speed fourth gear would be direct drive. With a five-speed, normally fourth gear is direct drive. They do have different ratios on these different transmissions. Yeah, and it also doesn't come with this piece of the speedometer uh, driven gear. Yeah, and with this piece of the speedometer gear, you got to make sure the seal is actually on the thing. You can push the seal down farther if you have to, which I just did. It was just barely on the end of the, the gear. Yeah, I took this aftermarket kick down cable and put some heat shrink tubing right here. That makes it a lot better. Yeah, and here's how I like to put transmissions in. With automatics, I put the transmission on the jack and get it first where I want it. And then I'll put the torque converter on here. It's much easier to deal with it when it's not as heavy. Yeah, and then you're going to push on the torque converter and spin it around in circles until it goes all the way on. And you'll feel it. And you can also tell by this edge down here that it's all the way on there. Yeah, and here's the little bracket that I came up with to mount the uh, kick down cable to the carburetor. Yeah, I got the torque converter and that cover on. Yeah, that cover didn't fit exactly right. I had to rework it a little bit. Yeah, and here's how that bracket came out for the kick down uh, cable. So it all works now. And for the uh, vacuum modulator line, I had to rework that because this doesn't have that hole in the intake where you can screw that fitting in. So it's, I'm going to have to put it in this line that, that comes from the carburetor.
Yeah, so what I'm going to do now is put the shifter in here, and I just went with one of these B&M shifters. And here's what the shifter looks like. And these are the two brackets you use for GM uh, cars. And it also came with all these other brackets for Ford and Chrysler. So the first thing I'm gonna have to do is make a patch to put over that hole in the floor. Yeah, what I did first was drill, mounted it where I wanted it. Now I'm gonna make that cover to put on there. It's just on here temporary. It looks like the cable, I'm gonna be able to drill a hole right through that cover that I make and that's where the cable's gonna go through at. Yeah, and here's the piece that I'm gonna put in the floor to uh, cover up that hole. And the shifter cable goes through that inch and a half hole. That's what it's said to do. And it came out perfectly in this uh, piece. Yeah, I got that piece screwed in there. I'm going to weld it in there. Because some of the screws couldn't be in there anyways after it's done because the shifter mounts right where they it does, right where the screws are at. Yeah, I got that piece welded in there. Only one of the screws has to come back out because the shifter bolts right where it goes at. Yeah, and on stuff like that where I got no place to clamp the ground clamp, I took this uh, magnetic clamp and then I just made a piece of metal that's attached to it where I can clamp the clamp to it. Yeah, I got the shifter all hooked up down here to the transmission. The cross member's just sitting in here uh, loose and the transmission mount's not in it. That's why the cable's not exactly the way it goes right now. And I'll have to also put zip ties on that cable to keep it off the exhaust. Yeah, and here's the wires that should have went to the neutral safety switch that are behind the ashtray here. Somebody cut it off and hooked them together. Now I'm going to run those down, and I think I'm going to glue this piece of carpet because this way the hole had to be cut out, a little bit of it will show, so I think I'll just glue this down, and it'll cover it up. Yeah, I had to take it and cut an inch off of this piece to get it to fit right. So the dipstick tube is supposed to be here tomorrow, and then I'll put the transmission cooler in. Yeah, I didn't want to do that until the uh, dipstick tube's in, because it's easier to get to it with the lines not in there yet. Yeah, I just got the dipstick tube in there. Yeah, that wasn't real easy to do. Yeah, so now I'm working on getting the transmission cooler in here. I cut one of the lines off so I can get it in there, because i got to cut them off anyways because we're going with an aftermarket transmission cooler. Yeah, and here's the transmission cooler lines. I've re-bent them, and I'm going to do the first step to flaring it on the end, and then the hose is going to go over there to go to the aftermarket transmission cooler. Yeah, these were stainless steel. It was real hard to bend the head. I hope I can flare it. Yeah, and this master coal hydraulic flaring tool is the best. Yeah, and it works very well. Yeah, it actually flared this stainless steel uh, tube. And if you don't do this to it, over the years I've seen many cars where people put an aftermarket transmission core and they just cut the lines off. And what happens is it blows the hoses off and you see them with a whole bunch of hose clamps on each hose. So this works perfect when you do this and it can't do that. Yeah, so I got the cross member back in there, and it takes the same uh, transmission mount as the Ford Speed. And I got the transmission core lines all in there. So what I'm going to do now is hook the exhaust up and put the drive shaft back in, then I'll mount the, figure out how to mount, make some brackets for the transmission core to mount it in front of the radiator. Yeah, I got the exhaust hooked back up and the drive shaft in. 
And with a Turbo 350 and an M21, they take the same uh, yoke. Yeah, if you go with a Turbo 400, then you have to, it takes a bigger yoke. Yeah, and here's the transmission core. And it's always best to use one of these aftermarket ones when you're running a high style torque converter. And normally it would go through the radiator and through this, and on the instructions it tells you which line does what, which line on the transmission's the return line. But in this case, it doesn't matter which way I hook it up since I don't, I'm not using the one, I don't have the one on the radiator. So now I'm going to figure out how to mount this on there. Yeah, so here's how I had to mount the uh, transmission core in here. It's on the driver's side. Because of the AC and everything on the passenger side, I can't couldn't get it in that side. Yeah, and you can see it up in there.